Now we're inside of the home. And every the components, everything that we've seen outside, the, the guts of the entire HVAC system are, are usually hidden from view. What you do see in a home is a few things you'll recognize. You see a thermostat, you see your air return, and then you see your floor vents. Now, this is where we were talking earlier, where the inside air is pulled into here. And it goes down, it goes into the unit underneath the home, the air handler, and it passes over the coils and it comes back out as cool air. That's what magically happens. And to make all that work, we have a thermostat. And in particular, we use a programmable thermostats on our homes. And Jerry here is going to explain to us a little bit about programmable thermostats, what they do, and how they can benefit uh, energy conservation. Mike, this particular thermostat is a, a Pro 5000. Of course, it's touch screen, and the reason we like the touch screen is it's very easy to program. Uh, some of the old traditional ones, you would have to push several buttons, but the, the advantages to a programmable thermostat, of course, is we can set up for two events, two times a day or four. Um, most people that have regular schedules can uh, set their thermostat back and not keep it quite as cool or warm, depending on what the climate is, and actually save money. There again, back to this particular home, it holds so good that there's not much heat loss or gain within these homes. Now, one of the questions a lot of people ask, should I set my unit back? Doesn't it cost more for it to heat? Doesn't it cost more when it runs longer? These particular homes, of course, are ideal for programmables. The degrees normally, if you don't mind me saying, one instance we had a storm on one of your homes that a storm had come through, knocked the power out, put a glitch in the, in the girl's board. Uh, it took her three days to realize her air conditioner wasn't working. It held, it held it the held temperature it that long, long before uh, she actually had a complaint. Uh, but with all that said, the programmable thermostats are uh, very functional. They're efficient. They also help you save power uh, on your heating and cooling costs. Now, I noticed something a little bit unique to this home uh, on the, and the condenser that you put outside, or maybe it's underneath, and you can explain that, is that when, when the fan came on, it came on real slow. And then when we turned the power off earlier and you were doing some adjustments, you turned it back on and it came on real fast. Right. Why, why the difference in, 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 you were explaining to me earlier, stages? What's the right. difference with the, that these, speed and the stages? These particular air handlers, of course, have a variable speed motor, which goes into the configuration of your SEER rating. And what actually has happened is that, is that motor is designed with a board on it that measures the amp draw and the pressure and it maintains a constant static pressure in the house and each time it cuts on it's sitting there figuring out how fast it needs to turn mm -hmm. and of course it ramps up and ramps down on cutoff. Um, actually, in, let, let's talk about that real quick. The variable speed air handlers when you go from the own selection on your fan, mm -hmm. it's not a traditional air handler that's going to go wide open. It only runs at 25%. So actually, the homeowner would never even probably hear the fan running, and you could get constant circulation in your home at a very, very low cost. Um, but but if it needs it, then it'll ramp up? Absolutely. Okay. So, yes, sir. So it knows that. It's sensing how much air you actually need. And if you only need to put your foot on the gas a little bit, it just that's touches correct. it. correct. And it just gets it up to where you need to be. Right. Unlike you know, a lot of conventional systems out there, when, they, when, when the temperature drops down one degree below where it's mm -hmm. supposed to be or above where it's supposed to be, you know, that throttle comes on wide, wide open, open and it just blows air into your house and Absolutely. Psh, shuts it right back and on. And there again, it's condensed for 16 series, two-stage cooling. When it drops one degree, he's only using 60% of that two tons. So actually, he's using below one ton of cooling to do the whole bottom floor of this in this particular zone. More here. efficient, and, and more the motor, cost of works with it. They both work together. They communicate. And that then result is a lower power bill. Absolutely, that's life. right. That's great. And longer life on the equipment and everything. Well, while we're standing here, I, the, the air return on here, um, what is the, the and a lot of questions get about air filters, and we had talked about this before. Standing here now looking at it, what is the schedule that one should actually change their, their air filter? Schedule, they'll vary from location to location, of course. Every 30 days, a lot of people will may look at the filter and not think it's dirty, but there, there's still some particles up within the filter. Um, maybe the best reminder is every, every month when you pay your power bill, change your filter. If you ever get your house paid off, you're not going to have that payment anymore. You may forget. So 
every 30 days is really a standard. Uh, and we recommend, especially with electronic air cleaners, you do not need the thick HEPA filters. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're a lot of restriction. They have a lot of drop across it, which makes the unit try to pull harder. Uh, anything that may pass through here, there again, the electronic air cleaner will take care of it for you. And, and Every 30 days is a really good rule right. of thumb. And, and on new construction, they should probably do it within the first two weeks of or so? Of course, yes. Okay, because there's a lot of the, the dust and everything that's still in the home, moving that's boxes, right. yeah. you know, yeah. fabric uh, uh, dust. Right. Um, so, a dirty air filter, what is that exactly that going to do with the system in the home? Well, it, what it's doing is it's starving the effectiveness of the air handler to pull air and circulate it through the home. It would be no different if you take and put your hand over your nose and your mouth and try to breathe. It's, it's harder for you to do as it is as hard as that equipment to work properly. It's very important to keep that filter clean. Uh, we always use the disposable filters. They do make the washable ones. That's a preference, but for the price of the disposable filters, you're better to buy them. Let's not vacuum them off. You're going to make particles go actually as you bump it, go up on the other side of the filter. So you're best just to replace them every 30 days. So vacuuming them things off is a myth. No, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> it is a myth, but I was saying no. Let's not do that. Don't do yeah. that. We don't need to vacuum them. Well, I just, or turn them around, neither. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and speaking of myths, I've, I've, I looked a couple up. Uh, that were out there, and I, I saw a few that were, were interesting. One of them was Freon in your unit. And how often should someone get their Freon changed in their, uh, their condenser outside? Never. Freon, your refrigerant cycle, is a closed system. If it works 50 years, you should never need Freon. If you have to go put air in your car tire, it leaked out. If you never had to put air in, you can wear the tread off of it. So if you have to add Freon, you've got a leak and, you, and it needs to be found and something needs to be done to your system. Okay. A Freon does not evaporate out of the system. And the other, other one I saw was interesting was in rooms, and I've actually seen this on TV advertising and seen this in different places, is in rooms that you're not using, should you close those register vents in those rooms and shut the door and... You know, Mike, I'm glad you asked that question. I have also seen advertisements on it. Let's close off the vents we're not using. When a home has a design on it and a load on it, the registers have certain CFMs to condition that amount of area. This house works as a whole. It doesn't do any good. It's actually probably detrimental in the fact of you know your air quality, the moisture getting in the room. Anytime you close off a vent and you close that door, you have potential for stale air, moisture to accumulate, the house works as a whole, so you're better, it's not going to save you any money, you're better to condition the whole area. Unless you can absolutely seal something off, in effect, an upstairs, and that's, most houses aren't, you know, built in that design, I don't believe anyway. But let's always leave them all open. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, Jerry, I appreciate you taking the time sure. to kind of give us the walkthrough today uh, and be able to show us exactly how this, this works and maybe take some of the mystery out of it. Right. I know that Total Systems is, is a great company. We're Thank glad you. to partnership with you all. We appreciate uh, that. And we appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Thank you for joining us on this tour of this home today. With Total Systems, Jerry Hall, and myself, Mike Atowski, with Showcase Construction. As we took a tour, we learned a few things about HVAC systems. If you have any questions or you'd like to see some more videos on homes and installation or systems that go into a home, please contact us at any of the links on our website at www.showcasenc.com or you can call us at 910-864-0247. Thank you.